First, I'd like to thank everybody for coming. Um, my name is Jay Freeberry, and I'm here to represent my partner, Patrick Duffy, who is in a conference in Colorado, and our company, Chatham Bay. In a partnership with Jonathan and Alan Litt, we, the owners of the lofts, and what you see today is a vision of the project that began April 13, 2012, nearly four years ago. It is with great pride that I welcome everyone here today for the grand opening of the lofts at Clifford Brown Walk. I would like to give a special welcome to our elected officials who are here with us for this celebration. Governor Jack Markell, thank you for taking the time out of your busy statewide responsibilities to join us today. Governor, I'm sure you hear a lot of complaints and problems within state government. Not at all. But, <laughs> but very few compliments. Patrick, Alan, Jonathan, and I want to thank you for the outstanding help and guidance that we received from your departments. We were new to the state of Delaware system and had much to learn in 2012. The Departments of Historic Preservation, State Housing, Natural Resources, and Economic Development, better known as SHPO, DSHA, DENREC, and DITO, have a phenomenal group of professionals who guide us very patiently through a labyrinth of paperwork and regulations. You have assembled quite a fine team who serve our state well. County Executive Gordon, a longtime friend, thank you for being here. I learned much from you when I served in the police department and again in the land use. You taught me that excellence was a standard to be brought to every job. We use that as our guiding principle in planning these unique residential lofts. You were instrumental in bringing new economic development to the city of Wilmington with the new Wilmington Stock Exchange and you are to be congratulated for your effort. Thanks again for coming. Councilman Darius Brown, is, is he present? Well, <laughs> Councilman Brown, I wanted to thank him for his support throughout this entire process. His active efforts allowed us to help develop these quality lofts when a lot of the uh, residents did not think that they belonged here. So I wanted to thank Councilman Brown. Representative uh, Stephanie Bolden, I wanted to welcome you from the City of Wilmington 2nd District. Thank you for coming today. I hope you continue to support projects like this throughout your district and we look forward to working with you. Uh, Jeff Flynn, is Jeff Flynn here? Well, I'd also like to thank the Director of Economic Development for the City of Wilmington. Uh, Jeff was with us since the inception of this project, and without his efforts, I don't think we'd be here today. So I'd like to thank Jeff. And a special welcome to State's D Director of Economic Development, Bernice Watley. As I said to you, Governor, you and your staff are a model of professionalism. And we want to thank you for the investment that you guys put in and allowed us to accomplish what you see here today. Before I introduce the Director of Delaware State Housing Authority, I would like to give you a very brief overview of this project. You are standing in the former Newcastle Leather Warehouse. The building was built in 1917 and originally housed a leather manufacturer. Fast forward 100 years and an investment of $18 million and you have what you see here now, the lofts at Clifford Brown Walk. I believe Mr. Clifford Brown would be very pleased with these innovative designs. As most of you know, Mr. Brown was a famous young jazz musician born right here in the east side of Wilmington. He left behind a legacy of music for which he is well known. We hope the spirit of Clifford Brown will permeate these lofts named in his memory. We wanted to capture the history of the building while offering the excellence in a lifestyle that everyone in America deserves. My partners were the architects who cobbled together the funding to make this happen, and it was a very complicated and noteworthy process. Seven million dollars in federal and state historic tax credit through the investment of Apple and Boston Financial. 2.5 million dollars from Delaware's housing fund. 625,000 from the Brownfield Redevelopment Fund, and most recently 100,000 from DITO. And also would like a special thanks to M&T Bank, which allowed this project to come to life while all the pieces of the funding were coming available. Our partnership with the business sector serves as a perfect balance to the public dollars that were invested in this $18 million historic redevelopment project that also cleaned up 100 years of pollution. To acknowledge the private sector's immense contribution, I would like to invite my partner, Jonathan Litt, to come up and recognize some other folks who were instrumental in our success. Jonathan.
Thank you, Jay. It's been a pleasure working with you, and I'm the newcomer to Delaware. I'm the Yankee from up north, and uh, it's been great, and I've really been impressed with the outpouring of support for all the different uh, constituencies that have helped us get to where we are today. I just wanted to thank a few key people that have helped make this a reality, from finance to design to Delaware State Housing Authority and construction. First, Boston Financial, as Jay mentioned, provided us with our low-income housing tax credits and our federal historic tax credits. And Steve Napolitano is here today, and I wanted to thank you and your team in helping us get from there to here. From, uh, as uh, Jay mentioned, also Apple and uh, our attorney Bob Jacobs, who's here today, was also very instrumental in getting Apple to come and, and be the purchaser of the state historic tax credits. M&T Bank, led by Ryan McAuliffe, Matt Gatsakis, and Beryl Moore, have been with us through thick and through thin, and have uh, been great partners in, in seeing this to reality. Ingram and Construction came in uh, uh, to help us and uh, provide the necessary uh, construction expertise, led by Brad Ingerman. Unfortunately, he's not able to be here today with his uh, very capable team who are here on a regular basis, Ed Koop, Ed Rollison, Don Kane, Rich Rohn, Ed Kaiser, and Hank Newburn. Also, I'd like to personally thank Trey Wiseman, who works with me at Cole Construction. He lives in New Jersey and drove here almost every day for the last six months, an hour and a half each way, to see this to fruition. It's a dedicated individual. Arbor Management, Dave Curtis, Tam Lim Tim Lombardo, Fern Moore, and Savita are here helping to lease the units, manage the units. They're certainly, Arbor is certainly well known to Wilmington and uh, we're proud to have them uh, as our management partner here. The design team consisted of Kent Purdy and, and Nissa Eisenberg of Miller Purdy Architects, Jeff Vaughn of Blake and Vaughn, they were the mechanical engineers, Tom Baker from Baker Ingram, the structural engineers, Cindy Hamilton of Heritage Consulting was our exterior facade engineer to, to preserve our historic tax credits. The Bada family, Bada Environmental, Bada Engineering, <laughs> Naraj, Ramesh, and Narish, thank you for leading us through the various areas that you helped us with, environmental and civil. Um, Tom Kovach from Sekutla Legal, and also, uh, it was mentioned earlier, I just want to also thank for their support, Jim Poland and uh, Kate Durant from Denrec. And lastly, the prior owners of this building were uh, Sasco Realty, Dick Hatfield, and Bill Parks, and they couldn't have been more patient sellers. I've been a seller, and you just want to be done, <laughs> and you just want to be done. And they understood what we were going through, and they supported us and helped us through the, some trying times, and uh, it, it, they deserve a thank you for uh, helping us get to where we are today. And if I missed anyone, I sincerely apologize. A general thank you to all. <laughs> and finally, please let me welcome Mr. Anas Benati, the director of the Delaware State Housing Authority. Governor Markell, you are fortunate to have him on your team. We thank you, Mr. Benati, for your assistance in this project. We are appreciative to all the hard work you and your staff put forth on our behalf. We were first timers in your system, so your staff had their hands full with all the questions, emails, and panic as we progressed through the phases. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Director Anas Benati. What was that again? He's, the governor is fortunate to what? <laughs> I was just going to say, and you remind me of that all the time. <laughs> well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I, this is really quite an impressive project. I, uh, I want to first thank DSHA staff who worked in this project, especially Susan, Emily, Stephanie Griffin, I think they are here, so thank you for your hard work. Uh, also recognize Ruth Skolowski, who is a member of the Council on Housing, uh, which is a body that advises DSHA on projects like this uh, for approval. Uh, so thank you for being here and for your support. Uh, I want to thank all the partners, uh, and uh, thank you, uh, Jonathan, for listing uh, as many as you did. Uh, thank you for your partnership and collaboration. Uh, special, really, thanks and kudos to uh, Jay, 
Pat and, and Jonathan, uh, uh, the three musketeers. I know Alan uh, had the 30,000 view and, and idea, but really the three musketeers, if they didn't uh, keep their focus on, I know at many stages they could have easily said, oh, you know what, I'm tired of this. I'm going to just wrap it up and take my losses and leave. Uh, but they kept it going. They kept us going. And uh, it's because of them that we are here today. So let's hear it for the three musketeers. I had the chance to visit the sites uh, with Susan and Jay and, and Jonathan, uh, I think it was Christmas week, and uh, they gave me a tour and I was so impressed. Uh, I, I told uh, Jay, we gotta come back, bring the governors and the elected official to really see the, the end product. Uh, luckily my wife is not here because she would be jealous of the countertop and the cabinet. <laughs> uh, but this is, this is really great, and this will really help our efforts uh, to eradicate the stigma that's associated with affordable housing and what people think of affordable housing and what should affordable housing look like. Uh, this also will complement the investments uh, that the state and DSHA specifically are making in this area. Just behind me here is another 9% tax credit product that, uh, project. Uh, with nine uh, units that's still in construction, as you can see, that are habitat homeownership units. So that's a $10 million investment total. Uh, we also have Sacred Heart, just a couple blocks from here, where DSHA is putting $1.3 million, leveraging about $10 million worth of investment. If you go down on, on the east side uh, more, you will find the uh, east side rising and some of the work that's happening with Women in Housing Partnership in terms of demolition, acquisition, rehab of homeownership uh, project, and then you have Market Street Village. So just on these few blocks uh, alone, in the last couple of years, DSHA has invested close to $10 million that's leveraging more than $50 million of other public and private investments. And we could have not done that without the support and understanding of our state legislators and uh, uh, mainly of our governor. Uh, early on, Governor Markell understood that uh, government uh, housing programs that are managed by DSHA, like the one contributed to, to this project here, are certainly about the social impact that we create uh, for our residents, but also as important as the social impact is the economic impact. The leverage that we are creating, the construction jobs, bringing people in here who will be spending, who will be living in this community, has a really uh, an impact on the community. It's something that we look at when we are putting this project together. So without further ado, please help me welcome our governor, Jack Markell. Thank you. Well, thanks, Anas. Uh, it's a great project. Uh, Jay, congratulations. And uh, Jonathan, thank you uh, to the entire team uh, between your companies. This is really awesome to uh, Joseph. Which one's Joseph? And Jenna, I, I'm assuming that's you. And Brady, well, congratulations to you guys too. Have you ever been to one of these projects before, like it, that your dad's worked on? Yeah. Pretty cool, isn't it? <laughs> and this, so, and, and the reason I am calling you guys out is because I want you to know the way that this kind of thing comes about. And it starts when somebody like your dad has a vision for how you make a community better. And as you could tell by all of the people. Uh, the, the, the two of them thanked. It is unbelievable how many people it takes to make a project like this happen. It's frankly, it's, it's amazing. And so I want to, so I'm not going to thank all the people who were already thanked, but I do, I appreciate the comments that you made about the, uh, the great team we have, uh, the, the, certainly the work that uh, Anas and his team lead, uh, as well as Bernice over at the Economic Development Office and her team. Uh, Dave Small is not here from the Department of Natural Resources. Department of Natural Resources was actually really important to this project, uh, thanks to a partnership with BATA. Uh, I, could, I could see lots of heads nodding when I mentioned environmental cleanup. Um, but, uh, you know, th this, was a, this was a site that had a lot of prior uses which had, which had sort of contaminated the area. And when you want people living here, you have to clean it up. And so, uh, you know, so the, the, the partnership with DENRED, the Department of Natural Resources, is also really important, as well as the uh, uh, historic uh, preservation. I appreciated the fact uh, that, you, that you thanked uh, Dick Hatfield and Bill Parks. They are as fine uh, citizens and uh, community leaders as uh, this state has. Uh, great people. Dick, great to see you uh, uh, and Jamie and Jonathan here. I don't know. Is Bill here also? No. no. 
Okay. So, um, but, but thank you all as well. So for, for us, and I also, you know, to, to have the county executive here has really been a great partner uh, on some really important economic development projects uh, locally. Certainly appreciate your continuing uh, partnership. Uh, and to have Representative Bolden, uh, who is such a strong advocate uh, for her community, uh, grateful to you as always, and to Darius uh, as well. Thank you. Thank you, Darius, from Wilmington City Council. You know, my main message, first of all, our philosophy always about housing is that a relatively small public investment can leverage a much bigger private investment. And that's what the taxpayers expect from us. And it's true in this project, and it's true in projects that we've done uh, all over the state uh, under Anas's leadership over the last few years. And, uh, you know, that's, that's what you want. I mean, it's, the taxpayers just can't sustain, you know, all of the effort themselves. And, but when taxpayers, you know, if the taxpayers can help with the cleanup and, and provide some of the tax credit financing and, you know, the, the tax credits for the financing, uh, and the like, it can make a huge difference. And that's really, that is what we're seeing here, and that is what we're seeing all over the state. And Nas did mention and thank uh, Ruth Sokolowski, but I want to add my thanks as a member of the Council on Housing. We have found that an investment in housing, and this is one of the reasons that even during these challenging uh, economic times over the last few years, a dollar invested in housing yields a really significant return. I mean, the numbers are really, really big. Uh, and so even during tough economic times, we've continued to invest in housing because we know how important it is to the community. And I think you look at this project, this building, is really, it's really nice. I mean, it's just, I was really uh, taken aback when I came in to see what, you know, just how beautiful it is. And this location is incredible. You know, you just, you don't look at, I don't look at the city that often from this uh, perspective, but what an incredible location. I just feel um, so great on behalf of the folks who will be living here and uh, the investment that you, know, you all, starting with the entrepreneurs and the developers, have made with the support of so many others, uh, and what a difference it's gonna make in their lives. And you know, when you provide somebody, when, and, and when somebody can live in a place that is this nice, attractive, uh, the, the pride uh, that, sort of, that they feel and, and the way that they care, take care of the property, just it improves the entire community. And so I think in, in that way, this is really critical as well. So I am thrilled to uh, be here. Again, thank our cabinet secretaries. It's not often that uh, you know, the head of economic development comes to, a, um, a, to the, the celebration of a housing project like this. Um, and in this case, Dito had a, a role to play. But I think also, even if Dito didn't have a specific role to play here, uh, Bernice would be the first to acknowledge that an investment ho in housing is an investment in economic development. And I'm also so pleased that when uh, you all ran through the list of people who uh, supported this project, there were a lot of great Delaware names that came up. I know you're not from, we, we welcome you as a Delaware. <laughs> where, where do you live? I live in New York. You live in New York. All right, so let's just talk about this for a second, because I am pretty sure that you could reduce your property taxes <laughs> by like, it, by probably, by probably, no, probably like 90, maybe 90%. By I'm coming down sure. here, yes. So if uh, I'm sure you're a man of good sense and judgment, but if you really want to <laughs> prove that, you'd probably be coming down here. But uh, some great Delaware names uh, uh, who were associated with this project, which we are thrilled about. We've got so many phenomenal, you know, the folks who are going to be managing the building, the folks who built the building, the folks who did the environmental cleanup, um, all of them between uh, uh, Bata and Ingerman and Leon Wiener and, and so many, and, and uh, Dick and, and so many others. Uh, what a great project for this community, a great project for Delaware, and we are grateful to everybody who has helped make this happen. And with that, <laughs> and with that, I, I get to, uh, I have the pleasure of introducing Tom Gordon. And Tom and I have been spending a lot of time together uh, recently in person, uh, on the phone, uh, and uh, uh, communicating about a number of important uh, economic development opportunities uh, here in Newcastle County. He has been, I'd say he has been steadfast and he has been committed and he has just, uh, we've been working together really, really well on behalf of the people of Newcastle County and that's what the people of Newcastle County expect of us and I just want to say how much I appreciate that partnership.
and since I had nothing absolutely to do with this project, <laughs> I, I go anywhere the governor invites me, and I thank you, governor. And I just want to make two points about this governor. This is my 12th year as county executive, and I've been through 99 when DuPont Company left, and we started getting calls uh, from the DuPont Company to, and I got to be careful because I don't want to screw the deal up. They asked me to reduce property taxes, and, and I told uh, the chairman of both companies I wouldn't meet with them. The governor called me up, and I said, uh, my information is it's over. You know, they're leaving. I'm not going to help them. And he said, here's what we're going to do. And he said, we're going to come up with a plan, and I could see anger in your face. I could uh, see that you already were involved in, he took his political skills, he took his uh, knowledge of corporates, and he, not only did we not lose the one, we ended up with two major corporations. Now, nobody's going to understand right now what that's going to mean to Delaware, but it's awesome that he was able to do that. And a lot of people in this room know I was the guy calling him up saying, you know, it's over, we're done. And uh, he kept it together. And the best part is he called me up and said, now I need close to $8 million. Okay, you get it from your council. And I said, obviously, you're not reading the paper. <laughs> but what I can do, maybe, I can get you a meeting with six. I ended up with four. And after an hour, I said, you had me at hello. I'm all for this. After an hour, the governor had convinced this very tough council that this was a great project, and it's going to, I've never seen anything going to sail through so quickly. So, you, you know, you don't recognize the talent of this man, and I just wanted to mention that. Number two, I wanted to say, Jay, uh, you're a great police officer. You're great in land use, but you have set the gold standard. You, Pat, Jonathan, Chatham Bay. Uh, I brought uh, today, I brought uh, Stephanie Hansen here, Sophia Hansen from my community services who does housing, and she was telling me all about this project all the way here, and how uh, it's, you know, it's great to have affordable, safe, quality housing like this, and, and this is the first of its kind, and something that we certainly like to. So again, the governor, who puts a lot of money in Wilmington, uh, was able to be a partner in this and take a chance, and I, I, you see the product of it, and you know, I'm just here to say, I didn't do anything, but governor, you, did it, you made a difference. Thank you. Thank you. With that, I'd like to announce our next speaker, uh, Ms. Bernice Watley. Uh, we, we met probably Monday, I guess it was, right? And um, as I said, your, every department that has, we've touched with the state has been outstanding, and it was great to work with your department. Patty Cannon, I, I can't thank you enough. Um, thank you for all your work. And, and we, were, we were relieved to have that at the end of the project, to be able to get additional brownfield money since we expended our entire budget in you know, it was something that we really appreciate, and uh, I just wanted to thank you. So, Jay, thank you for having me and inviting me here today, and Anas, and Governor, great to see everybody here supporting this project. Um, as, you know, as the Governor said, this is um, so much, affordable housing is so much more than just uh, the effects, the positive effects to the occupants. It's, it's great for the entire region in terms of more spending in the community and obviously providing a workforce for the employers. So we're, we're really proud to partner on this program with DENREC in terms of the Hazardous Substance Act Brownfield program that we have. Um, to fill that gap that you had, we were really happy to work with you. Um, we also are really um, good with supporting our entrepreneurs and uh, their partners that may want to relocate to Delaware, so I'll be happy to work with you as well. <laughs> but beyond that, I really don't, I mean, everything really has been said. This place is beautiful, and to be able to make a, um, a historic landmark such as the leather business turn into this great place here in, in the city is, it's great. I mean, I think we've done so many different things all in one place with affordable housing, with maintaining the historic building with providing um, economic opportunity. So I'm very happy to be here and I'm very excited to see this. Uh, our next speaker will be uh, Miss Stephanie Bolden. Okay. 
Well, I guess I can get up here and say, first of all, uh, good afternoon, and uh, thank you so much, Jay. We did get to meet. You're looking awful sharp here from the last time I saw you. <laughs> um, I guess I could say we're really moving on up, and the east side has finally got a piece of the pie. <laughs> we, I, I'm thrilled to be here, but I just want to just go back and give a little bit of black history uh, for this area. Uh, as was mentioned, this uh, area is where Clifford Brown lived, and you know that he was a renowned jazz musician that died in the, his early 30s coming home from what they called back then a gig which was an affair that they were playing at. Um, and we have tried to keep his memory alive because in normal, in Europe and other places, they have streets and things named after him and there wasn't anything spe specific that was here. So we were, through MBNA, we were able to maintain his house, which is in the 1000 block of Clifford Brown Walk. Uh, we were also um, able to name this street Clifford Brown Walk when I was a member of Wilmington City Council and under the uh, auspices and, and the instructions of uh, former uh, mayor and city council person Jim Baker, we were able to do this. But across the street here where you see the little park that used to be called, it was a swimming pool. I grew up around here just around the corner. What was, this was, used to be Poplar Street, so I was in the 1100 block. And it was called Cruz School. And um, Mrs. Cruz was the first principal at Howard High School, which is a very historic school that is right next to us here uh, on Clifford Brown Walk. And then you have the Delaware Skills Center. Um, there are so many things around here in the history because our teachers lived here and Alice Dunbar Nelson was also a teacher that was at Howard uh, High School uh, back then. I wasn't there then, but uh, <laughs> anyway. And, and then we see we have Jazz Court, which I'm very pleased with those apartments that have gone up, as well as the bridge, which is down here at 16th Street, I named after a former mayor and city council president, Jim Baker. So it, it's a lot that's going on here. We have the Centennial Park, which is getting ready to take place. That's going to be where Brandywine Park is and things of that nature going on now. And I'm just excited about what has happened here on the east side because it's so much history that is here in the east side of Wilmington from where our first doctors lived, our first dentists, and all of them were all up in this area and around in this particular area here. So I, I just want to make sure that those that are coming in and as they invest in this area know the importance of the history that is here and that they learn it and appreciate it. And I think you'll have more appreciation for where you live and how to uh, enhance the area as we go through. I want to hopefully hope that the neighbors will get involved with the neighborhood. There are homeowners here which are across the street and we have an area called Wilson Place. Those are all homeowners back up in there too. And hopefully we will have a very productive civic association which will work together in uh, going forward and doing the best things we can here. Uh, the last thing I'll say is that I am so pleased that Arbor Management is managing uh, this facility. I have worked with Ar Arbor Management with Village of Eastlake and they are fantastic and have done a great job with all their tenants, et cetera. So I'm very pleased to be a part of it. Uh, maybe I might be able to get a loft here uh, <laughs> eventually. Um, <laughs> so hopefully, I want to thank you and thank all the investors and for everything you've done. So thank you. Uh, I'd like to introduce our last speaker, Darius. I don't know if you were here earlier, but uh, I just really, uh, really wanted to thank you. Uh, you were with this from the inception. Uh, Darius sat in Dick's office with us when uh, there was little hope for this project. It was going to die. Um, and Darius has spoken for us in several public meetings. And uh, despite some angry neighbors, you were uh, always defending us. So this project certainly would not have happened without you. And with no further ado, I introduce Darius Brown. Thank you so much, Jay, and to the governor and to Director Benati. Um, welcome to the third district. Uh, this is the place where opportunity lives. Uh, and we talk about creating livable neighborhoods here in the third council district. And what a livable neighborhood is, is a desirable housing stock. Uh, and so what you see with this project, with Jay and his leadership, is creating desirable housing stock that we can create lifelong communities. I grew up here on the east side of Wilmington and many 
uh, in my generation as we grew up and became older uh, moved out of the east side to acquire uh, townhomes and affordable housing uh, in other areas of Newcastle County because the amenities were not able to be provided for us here in the city of Wilmington. And through Jay's vision, through Jay's leadership, and as he mentioned, his perseverance, uh, we've been able to establish this project here uh, on Wilmington's east side here in the city of Wilmington. But also I want to stress that this project sits on the bank of Wilmington's other waterway, <laughs> Wilmington's other riverfront. And Jay is one of the pioneer investors uh, as we look at the 21st century uh, on how this riverfront, this waterway, uh, will become a part of changing this neighborhood, changing this community. So Jay, congratulations uh, on your achievements today. And we look forward to continued success as we continue to build the Brandywine.